That is nice. Welcome to a slightly messy worship tutorial studio. We have an experiment today. We have Axe FX3 content coming at you. I have been telling Bradford that he needs to play his spaceship pedal board into the Axe FX3 and uh, just to experience what it's like. Neither of us have, have heard this yet and Brad is going to, Brad and I are going to patch this pedal board into that Axe FX3 right there Yahtzee. on the uh, in, in the rack and we're gonna see what it's like and we're gonna let you experience this with us this light in the background. This is this is not very well thought through, Bradford. Hold on, we got to keep a distance. Got to we got to stay away from each other, and uh, we're gonna see what it's like together. And we're gonna get Brad's first impression. So we built a custom patch just for this. So there are three train wreck models in the Axe FX3. Uh, one of them is in the Helix. That's the Express. That is a Marshall uh, type circuit. Something like that. Plexi-ish. Yeah, Plexi-ish. Maybe like JTM45 Plexi-ish thing. And then there's the rocket, the train wreck rocket or the wrecker rocket in the Axe FX. That is an AC30 circuit. And then there's the Liverpool, which is a blend between the two. So Vox meets Marshall. Uh, so I built a Liverpool uh, patch in Axe FX and we were playing it today and it sounds awesome. And Bradford is, as am I, a huge fan of the uh, matchless DC30. Mm -hmm. And so we built a Wrecker Liverpool DC30 stereo patch and he's gonna run his stereo board into it. So we're just gonna patch it in right now. Do you want any effects from Axe Effects in, in this patch? Nope. So no delay, unless, no reverb. Unless the EQ is doing something we need. The EQ is like a core component of the amp tone. That's how so we, should we make that. them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the, um, the amps on. So this is the uh, here you can see this is the Liverpool. This amp is the DC30. It's got, and they're in stereo, so the DC30 is panned right. Liverpool panned left. Um, it's bypassing all of these delays. Uh, and it hits the cab block. The amps are in stereo, they hit the cab in stereo. This, these EQ blocks are all in stereo just by default. And uh, yeah, and then it's out. This is the main stereo output, which we need to keep. So we're just gonna patch Brad's board into uh, probably input two because you can use quarter inch cables. So you can go quarter inch out of your stereo board into a stereo input. So we'll just patch them in right here. And then um, if you come into the software- Both of them can go in the back? Or yeah. one in the front and one in the back? No, no, both in the back. Wow. Left, right. And so what we can do here Clean. in the software is- um, Let me Put get a my... stereo input block? Yeah, so you can just see. So, I don't even know enough about Axe Effects, but I just made that leap. That was yeah, easy you, to make. You got the it. The, the editor on Axe Effects is great. So you have the stereo input block, and you can just add input two, okay? And it's going to receive this in stereo, and then we're just going to patch it in. Uh, so you can patch it in right here. Boom. So Brad's board is going to hit this input, go straight into the amps, the cabs, and then out. Ooh. And then we're just going to record what you get into Logic. Uh, so it's basically all your wet effects, Bradford, are going to be in front of the amps. That's fine with me. That's how you typically run it, like with Kemper and that kind of thing. So uh, we just need two cables. We'll hook it up.
so wet effects, like real wet effects in front of the amps is a cool sound. It is. And it's it's weird in in the modeling realm, it's hard to recreate that. When you put reverbs and delays in front of amps like in Helix and Axe Effects, it never quite gets that sound. Would you agree? Yeah. Cause, I, well, especially, I haven't really tried it on Axe Effects, but in Helix, that's the case. Yeah, Kemper, I like, that's one reason why I like Kemper so much is I think it does a pretty good job. When you, you're talking running real effects, yeah. like running your board into into Kemper. Yeah, I like that. So what's your initial reaction doing that into uh, Axe Effects? First impressions, it sounds good, but I would need to, you can't treat it just the same. And I think as the Kemper. As well, I mean, just as any other piece of equipment. Yeah, it's its you own. You know, well, I'll, see, I'll see posts with people asking about or saying, hey, I'm trying to set up my my stomp to, mm -hmm. like it just doesn't sound as good, or I'm trying to set up my, my Kemper with the drive pedals or whatever. And I think a lot of people go into it thinking, well, it's supposed to sound like an amp, so can I just treat it like an amp? So like, even if you had like two AC30s, I bet you the two of those would react differently. Mm -hmm. Like you would have to, the knobs would have to be set maybe not exactly the same in order to sound I, I, yeah. uh, exactly the same. Um, if that makes sense. So I think the same thing, like right now, I think maybe a couple tweaks, maybe back down the um, the gain on the amps. Okay, so we made just a few tweaks to the amp models in the Axe FX. We brought the gain down a little bit because your board was hitting it pretty hard. Yeah, that, um, that, that compressor was probably driving a little bit. Yeah, well, and you, like, you're just gonna have to make, um, like if you run a board into something like this, you'll have to set it up for your board. And then we uh, we took a little bit of the brightness of the amps down, so we added a little more low end and took a little brightness off, so less gain and a little, and warmed them up a little bit. That is nice. So, uh, uh, this is another video, but I have, a lot of people see the Zoya and they're like, what is that thing? Oh, this with all the knobs. All the buttons, yeah. Yeah. All the buttons, right? I got, I got this Zoya set up right now to do chorus. Vibrato. Ooh, that's nice. That's the Zoya. It, that's a preset somebody else made. Um, and then, this is what I was going for. So, I wanted to hear that. Watch out for the content strike, police. Ah, ah. So, Brad, you've experienced the massive board, which is kind of funny. You said you haven't played it in a while. Yeah, I've been doing other stuff with gear on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> into the uh, into the axe, the mighty Axe FX3. What are your What are your thoughts? I would need. I, I sure off the bat, I think it's great. I would want to spend more time mm -hmm. doing things exactly the way. I don't know what it is. I'm not a. Um, this is kind of ironic. I'm not a use somebody else's setup kind of guy. Yeah. So like, if I were to use your axe effects on a Sunday when we were recorded or we're doing church mm -hmm. or whatever, I would like want to go home and like start from scratch. Cause I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess for me, it's like a, I need to make sure I understand everything that's happening. Yeah. So I know like I hear this and I want less of it or more of it or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, we did. We literally spent like five minutes or less yeah, and you setting the sound Did you just up. copy the settings of the amps from a patch we already made anyways yep. and yep. do a little bit tweak? There are like hundreds of other options in the Axe Effects for amps there. that you can choose from. Amps and uh, when you started that sentence, I thought you were saying there were hundreds of other options you could use to do go stereo and you're not far off. No, uh, no, that's uh, totally true. That's totally uh, for true. For other setups, yeah. Honestly, so I love the Kemper. I think there's something about the Kemper. I've heard some people say they don't like it because of the com there's some compression thing they can't get around. I, and, it, I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and like honestly, I kind of I kind of like the sound. I think in a mix, it. it sounds it sounds really nice. Um, but also, so like there's something about that that's this polished studio thing to me. Mm -hmm. And um, but 
I, I like that. What I don't necessarily love is effects after amps because they're really pristine. Yeah. So that's like a polished studio thing. So it's like, it's funny. Like what I love about the Kemper is I love running my effects straight in. And so this with the Axe effects, I'm loving that too. There's still something about the amps that are, they have this sound and like part of it's also the way we've set it up. And again, I'd want to tweak it, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of extra stuff just to say. This is very cool. It's cheaper than getting two Kempers. You know, one of the things about Axe Effects that you see people say a lot is it's really expensive. So the Axe Effects 3 is $2,000. That gets you the rack unit, no controller or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but if you consider what it can do for you, two amps in stereo, and that's just the amp modeling, right? Like that's well worth $2,000 if you consider the, the quality of amps you get. Or if you, yeah, if you look at the fact that like a DC-30 is nearly three grand, I think. Yeah, that's what we're running. Yeah. And you know, is does the DC-30 and the Axe Effects sound like a, a real DC-30? That's an argument that for another day. Now, the fun thing to do, Bradford, would be to run your board into the Helix or the HX Stomp. Consider the $600 HX Stomp can do the same. Or the $400 Strymon Iridium. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Which you use. Choose your own board. adventure. There you go. Hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, little experiment as much as we have. Brad's going to play a little more. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.